Post Aussie Reviews here with my review of the American Staffordshire Terrier, or the Amstaff as the dog is commonly known by. Now this here is Cooper, he's a one year old male, blue brindle Amstaff. Now the reason I chose to do a review on him and the breed in general, is just so any of you out there who are looking at getting this particular type of dog, have a little bit of background information, you know, before you make the commitment and the decision to buy one. Now, if you have a look at them, the first thing that you, you see is they are a very muscular dog, a strong dog. Um, on average, I suppose they'd be about twice the size of the English Staffy. Um, they are a lot taller than the English Staffy, that's for sure, and usually in their weight too. Cooper's about 32, 33 kilos in weight. Um, he'll probably put on maybe another one or two kilos, so maybe average out at about 35 kilos. So. They're not a large dog, but they are a medium dog, but a very well-built medium dog, that's for sure. Just to touch briefly on the background of the American Staffy, for those who you don't really know much about them, they have been used in the early 1900s over in the States there um, as working dogs, utility dogs on farms. So primary roles included, you know, protecting the farmer, obviously from uh, different wild animals, and also protecting livestock. Nowadays here in Australia, this particular dog is used as a, uh, a pet, and uh, also um, in shows, so um, you know they can be a show dog or just a, a just a good loyal pet, so to speak. If you actually have a look at the dog, they're fairly maintenance-free in the sense of they have a nice short coat. Coop here, as you can see, a you know, very short coat, and it's very easy to maintain. He only requires a brushing once a week. Um, if you do get, you know, some shampoo for cleaning with these dogs. Just make sure you get one for sensitive skin because a lot of these dogs, similar to like bull terriers and, and other similar dogs, do have some skin irritations or, or they can get very, very dry, itchy skin from uh, washing. So, But once again, that's individual from dog to dog. That's just a tip that you may find useful. Okay, when selecting a puppy, I strongly suggest that you go through a reputable Amstaff breeder. The reason why I say that is because just like any other dog, the Amstaff is no different. They do suffer different health problems such as hip problems and skin problems. So if you go through a reputable breeder, there's a good chance that through their history and their previous breedings of the dog, they've eliminated a lot of those problems. So that's one reason why I recommend it. The second reason is that with the Amstaff in particular, because they share very similar bloodlines to the American Pit Bull Terrier, without pedigree papers, most of the councils here in Australia will class the dog as an American Pit Bull Terrier, so there's a good chance you'll be prohibited from keeping the dog anyway. So that's the reason why the pedigree papers are quite important. When I first got Cooper, I just ran a series of couple of tests. You know, it's the old age saying of, you know, the dog will pick you or you'll know which dog's right for you. That's true to a degree, but I did a couple of little tests with him. When I first saw him when he was uh, five weeks of age, five, six weeks of age, I held him in my arms, so I put him on his back and saw if he'd struggle and a few different things like that just to see how he'd respond. Um, you know, if you've got a dog that just doesn't want to be with you and so forth, you might have a few problems. But as you can see, he's, he's fairly loyal and he just, he just loves being around me and this is just the sort of dog that I was looking for. So, And as you can see, he's really showing his age here because he's um, still a puppy, very much so in the head, you know, he doesn't like sitting for too long and um, he's certainly showing that now as he's trying to uh, devour a few rocks. So, <laughs> we'll move on. Okay, when exercising the Amstaff, it's very important to exercise the dog every day. This dog is a utility dog, it loves exercise, it loves strength exercises and endurance sports. So, with Cooper here, he absolutely loves this tyre. Now, this tyre here is uh, called the Tire Biter from Poor Tracks. I just picked it up at my local pet shop. Um, it's supposed to be good for their teeth and so forth when they actually bite into it. It's not going to damage the dog's teeth like uh, perhaps a car tire might. It's got a good, strong, sturdy rope at the end, so it's great for like just pulling games and things like that. So you just watch Cooper here. He absolutely loves it. Go on, get tire. So they're giving the command to get the tire, and, and he really absolutely loves it. So as you can see, he sort of just plays with it at first, and then the, then he gets a lot stronger. Now, I'm actually holding this really tightly. If he really starts giving it a good yank, this is one thing you've got to be very aware of with these dogs, is you need to hang on because his shoulder can actually be really hurt okay, doing this. So you've just got to be careful with the dog and realize the strength and the power they've got in them. So I'll hold on with two hands here, and you can really see 
the strength that this dog has. Another way that I exercise Cooper is just with a standard horse whip with a plastic bag tied onto the end of it. He absolutely loves this, so it's a good idea, like, you know, if you want to exercise him without exerting yourself too much, um, it's just another great option. So I'll just show you here. Come on, boy. <laughs> and he's quick to bite it, so yeah, he loves this and he'll keep doing this for hours, you know, until he gets really tired. One thing you've got to remember though with these dogs when exercising them is not to over-exercise them. Because they are such a strong dog and they do have a high tolerance to pain, so a lot of the time their body will probably be saying give up, give up, but their mind won't. So just keep that in mind when you do exercise them, don't go over-exercising them. Uh, I run personally with Cooper every couple of days. I go for about a 4k jog with him, but I don't do anything more than that because it could hurt his uh, joints. Okay, when training the Amstaff, me personally with Cooper, I took him to puppy preschool when he was only young. That way it gave him good socialisation skills and just helped him uh, or assisted him in becoming a well-balanced dog. As I say, these dogs have a, a very high tolerance to pain, so by using that negative reinforcement and you know really belting them, that's just not going to get the results you desire with the dog. The way I did it with him was positive reinforcement. I simply used treats and uh, just repetition. So even with the sit commands, the drop command, uh, stay and things like that, it was just repetition and treats as a reward when he did the right thing. Now these dogs are really good dogs, as I say, but you do just have to watch them around other dogs. Like if they are challenged to a fight, they're not well known for backing down from that, okay, because they do have little fear. So that's why I recommend take the dog to puppy preschool get them used to socialisation at a young age. They're also very good around kids. They are not human aggressive, as some people will have you know. They're definitely not human aggressive. These dogs are very well balanced. Uh, when Cooper was about uh, nine to 10 months of age, he started really coming out of his shell with uh, protectiveness of me. Uh, in saying that, not so much when we're just out in public, but the family home. If someone was driving up the driveway or someone was around that shouldn't be around, he certainly let us know with, uh, with a few barks and uh, was very protective until we'd say to him, well, look, that's enough and stop. So just overall, very, very well-balanced dogs, and I would highly recommend them to uh, people who are looking for a dog with those particular qualities. Okay, guys, so if you think the Amstaff is for you, um, please just take um, in what I said about the dog. The dog is a very, very loving dog and it loves to be a part of your family. So if you're the sort of person who can't commit to giving the dog the time that it deserves, uh, please don't look at this breed. Um, the dog won't want to be out in the backyard and then just every couple of days you pay attention to it for five minutes. This dog will love to be a part of the family. If you're watching television, this dog too wants to be sitting on the couch with you watching television. They just love being a part of your life. They're a great dog for a variety of purposes. That just comes down to how you raise them. Raise them correctly and they'll give you plenty of love and loyalty in return. Now if you do want to uh, have a look at this dog, I'll have a link at the bottom of this review with the breeder that I went through. Um, please contact her. She's a very friendly person and she's more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Or if you do want to ask me some more questions about it, please feel free to comment online, send me an email or something like that and I'm more than happy to respond and help you out. Once again, thanks for watching guys. Um, remember, Aussie Reviews under YouTube is my channel. Please subscribe and uh, we'll get more done in the future.